What in the world is going on over here? Ah, oh, shucks. Caught me in the middle of something. But let me tell you a little bit more all about corn. Hello, I'm Ranger Rebecca. Every September on the third Saturday, Great Smoky Mountains National Park offers the Mountain Life Festival on our Mountain Farm Museum. This year, we're bringing the festival to you through this series of videos. Corn has been a staple in the diets of North and South Americans for thousands of years. Millennia before Europeans colonized Southern Appalachia, the Cherokee grew and harvested corn as a key food source. Today, corn is the second most valuable plant crop in the world. After all, who hasn't enjoyed corn on the cob, a warm tortilla, or a slice of cornbread? But flavor isn't the only reason for corn's popularity. There are a few key reasons why corn is so globally popular nowadays, and these same characteristics are what made it a crucial crop for Southern Appalachian farmers in the 18 and 1900s. Corn is a relatively affordable, high yield crop. It is calorically dense and it can be converted into a number of different food products, like cornmeal or today's high fructose corn syrup. For people growing their own food and for those facing food instability, both at the turn of the 19th century and today, these traits make corn a crucial crop and staple food source. As such, most families throughout the Smokies in the 19th and 20th centuries grew corn and would harvest it in the fall before the bitter mountain winters came. Hickory King, or Hickory Cane, was the variety most commonly grown in this area. As you can see behind me, it grows up to 14 feet tall and produces a long white kerneled ear. Much of the corn was stored in the corn crib, a building dedicated entirely to storing and preserving corn. A portion of the harvest would typically be dried on the cob and stored in the corn crib throughout winter. Some of the corn would be shelled instead. Farmers would remove the kernels from the cob and dry the kernels to keep them over winter. This dried corn could be ground into cornmeal, turned into liquor, cooked and eaten outright, or stored for the next year's growing season or winter, should the following year's harvest fail. So long as the shelled kernels stayed intact and dry, they could be used as seeds for the next year's crop. But corn wasn't only good for eating. At a time when going to the store was an expensive, time-consuming process, people used every part of the corn to fill other needs. To supplement the diet of their free-ranging livestock, farmers could grind corn stalks into fodder to feed to their animals. Corn husks were dried and woven into rugs, mops, and brooms, or used to stuff mattresses. The corn cob could be turned into an iconic corn cob pipe. Both husks and cobs served more entertaining purposes as well. Husks could be used to make dolls, while dried cobs fitted with a spare feather made for excellent darts. Clearly, corn was an incredibly crucial and versatile crop for Southern Appalachian farmers at the turn of the 19th century. While most of us aren't playing with corn cob darts or sleeping on corn husk mattresses today, corn remains a staple of the American diet, and in many of the same ways as in the past. Today we use corn for fresh food, cornmeal, and alcohol alike. Though our methods of processing and storing may have changed, Corn's legacy as an inexpensive, filling, and versatile food source persists to this day. If you'd like more information on these topics, search the web for your local county cooperative extension office. Stay tuned for the next episode and check out our previous episodes by clicking the link. We're glad you joined us today and we hope to see you on the third Saturday of September for the next Mountain Life Festival. <laughs>